Hi, in this short video I just want to talk about the different structure of data that we're going to be uh, using during the semester. So the first and most common one we're going to be used during the semester is going to be called it's going to be called, called cross-sectional data. And what I mean by cross-sectional data is you're going to observe multiple individuals and it's going to be at a point in time or at the same time. time. So, for example, suppose X is starting salary for college graduates. Right? I'm going to represent that data with an X in, or X for starting salary and I for individual. And the individual could be 1 to 400 if we're talking about recent college graduates. Right? So I would go from 1 to 400, so X1 would be one starting salary. So you might have X1 might be $40,000, X2 might be $50,000, X3 might be $75,000, etc. Right? So the key thing is you're observing multiple individuals at exactly the same time. So the time here might be 2012. So X is the starting salary for individual or college graduates in the year 2012. Okay? So you're observing them all at the same time, 2012. All right. So it's very common for the individual to be a person. It could also be a nation. So you could talk about GDP per capita for the United States, GDP per capita for Canada. So in that case, the individuals would be countries if you were talking about GDP per capita. Or maybe what you're talking about is the unemployment rate across states. So in that case, the individuals would be the states of the United States, Alabama, Alaska, you know, Connecticut, California, etc. Um, or it could be firms. So you might be talking about profit of um, a bunch of individual firms. So GE is going to have, if X is profits, then I might be, you know, the first one might be GE, the second one might be Apple, the third one might be IBM, etc. So the important thing here is cross-sectional data is just multiple individuals at a single point in time. And these individuals could be people, states, countries, firms, or any sort of group. All right, so that's cross-sectional data. Second type of data that we have is time series, series data. And here, you're generally looking at a single individual, and it's at multiple points in time. So, for example, if X were the unemployment rate in the United States, we might look at it in 1949, 1950, 1951, 1952, etc. So the key point is we're observing a single variable or a single entity, in this case the United States unemployment rate, over multiple time periods. Okay, So we put T in the uh, subscript to indicate time series data. And you know we could look at not just countries over time, it could be states, right? Because we could be looking at the unemployment rate in the state of Connecticut over a period of time. Or it could be uh, you know, firms, we could be looking at the profit of GE over a period of time, or we could be looking at um, other types of entities. So it could be census tract data, it could be schools if we're looking at test schools, or it could be individual people. We could be looking at the test scores of students over a period, of an individual student over a period of time. So there's a whole bunch of different things that can be time series data. The key thing here is that it's a single individual and you're looking at them over a, a period of time. So we're going to work mostly with cross-sectional data. Some of our examples will be time series data. So those will be the two major types of data we look at during the semester. If time permits, then at the end of the semester, we're going to go ahead and look at what we call panel data. Uh, some people will call this longitudinal data. Okay. And the key point here is you're going to have multiple individuals, and not only will you have multiple individuals, but you'll have multiple time periods. And so when we're working with panel data, I'm still going to have a variable, I'll, I'll call it X. It'll have a time subscript or an I subscript for the individual and a time subscript for the period. Okay? So if you're looking and talking about GDP, imagine X is GDP per capita. 
then we might have data on all the countries in the world from 1950 to the present. Right? So in that case, the individuals would be the individual countries, but if we observe the GDP per capita, not just in 1950, but 1950, 1951, 1952, and all the way up into 2012, then we're going to have multiple observations on each and every country in the world. That's panel data. Okay? Another common use of panel data is we might observe you know, a whole bunch of states over a period of time. So say we've got cigarette consumption from 1986 to 1995. Well, that's 10 years worth of data. We've got um, 50 states. So I would go from 1 to 50, and the time subscript would go from 1986 to 1995, and we'd have 50 states, 10 time periods, a total of 500 observations. Okay? Or we might be looking at not just states, we might not be just looking at countries, we might be looking at individual firms. So for example, if X is profit, then I could be, say, all the firms in the S&P 500, so I would go from 1 to 500, and the time period could be from, say, 1990 to 2010. So then you would have 500 firms over 20 time periods, that's 10,000 individual observations that you're going to end up having. Okay. Um, or it could be individuals. We could be tack, uh, tracking test scores of individual students over long periods of time, not just in grade 1, but how they do all the way th uh, from grade 1 through grade 12. So you'd be looking at each individual 12 different times. Okay? So panel data is the nicest, it's the richest. You're looking at multiple individuals over multiple time periods, um, but it's a little bit more complicated to deal with, so we're only going to be looking at this at the end of the semester uh, if we have time. So those are the three basic types of data. We've got cross-sectional data, time series data, and panel data, which is really, you know, you merge those two together. We're going to be looking at multiple individuals over multiple time periods. For the most part of this semester, we're going to be looking at cross-sectional and time series data, but if we get a chance, we'll go ahead and look at panel data at the end. All right, so that's it for the different types of structure of data.